for my time, but I, I just want to respect the gentleman uh, who could not take it anymore and had to express himself. I acknowledge his pain. People have to understand, having seniority on this committee, that I have gone through these debates unending since 1995. We were not able to reauthorize the ban against assault weapons. I honor the service of Mr. Stubbe. I honor the service of Mr. Liu, my staff person, Army Ranger, retired, talks about the M4. So none of the debate on the other side is enlightening. It's rather insulting. It's nothing to do with reality. No one on this side is arguing for the removal or the equation of weapons issued to our military here on the street. Um, I have a poster on the weapons, which I hope will be put up shortly. But the bill deals with assault-styled weapons, warlike weapons. In addition, the other side wanted to make mockery because we protect weapons, antiques, and others. You've heard that. You can't win for losing. You try to be responsible, and you get attacked. Uvalde is about 70 to 100 miles from the border. When I was there, no one came up to me, no grieving parent, no child that I was giving little fuzzies out to and was hugging who was nine years old and 11 year old who played soccer with these children, not one of them said that they wanted to make sure that they had a weapon. The frivolity of this amendment is that we're not stopping anyone from having a weapon to protect their home. The frivolity of this amendment is that the issue of immigration, border protection, is the prerogative of the federal government. My friends, of course, keep arguing that we're doing nothing. I beg to differ. Tell the residents of South Texas and other places that happen to have their neighbors who are border patrol agents. We're going to look into what happened with their assistance because I know that border patrol agents rushed in to help. But because there was no leadership, no command, uh, we're tracking that issue as well. So again, this is frivolity. This is dilatory tactics as the boxes of amendments that you will hear from over and over again. Let me be very clear. AR-style weapon is on the street. Ghost guns are on the street. Bump stocks are on the street. That is what we are trying to deal with in terms of fighting against the violence that killed our children. This has no bearing because no one is stopping any family from having the protection that they need. This is bland. This says and is not otherwise prohibited the possession by an individual who resides within 10 miles of a um, international border. So it's frivolous because they have the ability to have eons of guns not included in this bill. But someone wishes to put uh, the lives of children at the bottom of their feet instead of rocking them in their arms and saying, we'll do everything to protect you. I vigorously oppose this amendment um, because we know the gun lobby that is present in this room has succeeded in selling weapons of war of a military nature with the potential to leave victims unrecognizable to civilians knowing the damage they cause. This failure to foresee that generates amendments like this because no one on the border is stopped from protecting themselves. But no one in Uvalde, no one in Buffalo, no one in Sandy Hook asked anybody, hey, leave us a provision that we can hold a gun and protect our homes, because they know they have that right under the Second Amendment. 
and they have that right under their rights in this nation. I remind you, in God we trust on this, it is an outrage that we continue with this babble and unnecessary amendments that don't even see anyone reading the bill. Read, as my good friend Mr. Cicilline has said, read the bill. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. General Lee yields back for the purposes of gentleman from North Carolina. Seek recognition. I'll speak on the amendment. Gentleman is recognized. I would like to yield to anyone on the other side who would dispute that this bill bans weapons that are in common use in the United States today. Would, would anyone on the other side dispute that this bill would ban weapons that are in common use in the United States today? Would the gentleman yield? I would, to, 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 for an answer to that question. Yeah, that's the point of the bill. So, so you mean you? So to clarify, Mr. Chairman, you're saying it is the point of the bill to ban weapons that are in common use in the United States today. Yes, the problem uh, is that the gentleman use. will yield particularly dangerous weapons that are responsible for mass shootings. Well, I, and I the didn't loss yield to you, Mr. Cicilline, yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you did. Yeah. No, I, I wanted to clarify I, the point because actually, Mr. Cicilline, I think you're a very good lawyer. And to the extent you have no, spoken, I don't think that was a compliment. You are. No, well, it's, it, is, it is a compliment, although you've used your legal skill to obfuscate what the Supreme Court has said in very clear terms. So if you go to Heller, first of all, uh, Heller pointed out that the case to start with was United States versus Miller in 1939, where the Supreme Court talked about what the militia was entitled to use. And it said, ordinarily when called for militia service, able-bodied men were expected to appear bearing arms supplied by themselves and of the kind in common use at the time. It went on to say, Heller did, we also recognize another important limitation on the right to keep and carry arms. Miller said, as we have explained, that the sorts of weapons protected were those, quote, in common use at the time. Mm -hmm. In McDonald in 2010. If the general leave you left out the next sentence, in you think that well, limitation well, I'll, is... I'll, 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 believe me, we're going to have an opportunity okay. to get to your part about the unusual and dangerous. We'll yes. cover that too, and it, because it's all quite clear. What you suggest that this order possibly comply with what the Supreme Court has held in now three separate cases is absolutely absurd. You defy the Supreme Court of the United States in the same way the Democrats mounted massive resistance to Brown versus Board of Education. So we're going to explain that for the American people in the course of this hearing. The Democrats of the 1960s are the Democrats of the 2020s, once again. So let's get on with it. Uh, Mr. Chairman. McDonald said, Heller points unmistakably to the answer. Self-defense is a basic right recognized by many legal systems from ancient times to the present. And Heller, the Heller court held that the individual self-defense is the central component of the Second Amendment right. McDonald goes on. In Heller, we recognize that the codification of this right was prompted by fear that the federal government would, would disarm and thus disable the militias, but we rejected the suggestion that the right was valued only as a means of preserving the militias. On the contrary, we stressed that the right was also valued because the possession of firearms was thought to be essential for self-defense. As we put it, self-defense was, quote, the central component of the right itself. And then in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association from just several weeks ago, the court wrote, for example, he's talking about Heller. They're, they're talking about Heller. We found it, quote, fairly supported by the historical tradition of prohibiting the carrying of dangerous un and unusual weapons, quote, close quote, that the Second Amendment protects the possession and use of weapons that are, quote, in common use at the time. Yeah. Going on, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association, 2022. Nor does any party dispute that handguns are weapons in common use today for self-defense. So just as the chairman just acknowledged to me, this bill bans many types of weapons that are in common use in the United States today.
-hmm. And finally, well, the gentleman, two more. No, I'm not done now. I've only got 38 seconds. In fact, I probably have to come back to this. We'll get a chance to discuss it because you guys are trying to mislead on this. Drawing from this historical tradition, we explained there that the Second Amendment protects only the carrying of weapons that are in those in common use at the time as opposed to that, those that are, quote, highly unusual in society at large. So there we get close to the point that Mr. Cicilline attempts to confuse. There's a the distinction. These weapons that you seek to ban are in common use today. Finally, thus, even if, these, if colonial laws prohibited the carrying of handguns because they were considered dangerous and unusual weapons in the 1690s, they provide no justification for laws restricting the public carry of weapons that are unquestionably in common use today. I yield back. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I just have a quick question. What purpose does the uh, gentlelady from Texas see? I just have a question on procedure. Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. Uh, the gentlelady will suspend. What's the question on procedure? Mr. Chairman, the, the gentleman who disrupted the committee hearing, was, was he here as a guest of the majority party? I do not know, and he's not here. For His what name purpose is David he, Hogg, I believe. For what purpose does the, was Ms. Escobar seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. Gentlelady is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And let me express my gratitude to Mr. Cicilline and to you, Mr. Nadler, for bringing this important piece of legislation forward. Mr. Chairman, I knew that it would only be a matter of time before our Republican colleagues pivoted to the border. Their mingling of xenophobia with guns was unfortunately only too predictable. To Americans watching this hearing, we continue every day to get glimpses of their dark vision for America. And let me tell you, it is a violent, deadly, and hateful one. This amendment and the language that they use is an invitation to violence. As a reminder, I am the only member of this committee who lives on the border, raised her children on the border, represents and serves the border. And in two weeks, my border community will memorialize a terrible anniversary. Three years ago, a white supremacist drove over 10 hours to El Paso, and he confessed that he did that in order to slaughter Mexicans and immigrants. And he used the same hateful language of the former president and the same hateful language that my colleagues delight in using. In fact, they are gleeful about that language. On that horrible nightmarish day, 23 innocent souls were slaughtered. Dozens of them were injured. We hear a lot about the rights of gun owners to own assault weapons, to shoot varmints, to hunt deer, and I guess with this amendment, to shoot immigrants too. But my constituents were denied their rights. They were denied their freedom. And the nightmare for the survivors and their families is not over. This isn't a hearing about immigration. This is about assault weapons that destroy bodies and destroy communities. I have constituents who today, three years later, still have to undergo surgeries. They still have to undergo physical therapy. They still live with nightmares and the, the challenge of PTSD that remains. I still have constituents who ask me why we were targeted why people hate us because of the color of our skin. And I still have constituents who ask me why weapons that don't just go through bodies, but destroy bodies, create unfathomable carnage, destroy and rip apart nerves and bones and muscles, why those weapons are still allowed in our country. And please spare me your talking points about law enforcement. Based on this amendment, apparently my Republican colleagues don't trust law enforcement. And based on their opposition, they don't mind that law enforcement is routinely outgunned, outgunned at every turn. Spare me also the language about law-abiding citizens. Please, many of these mass shooters got their guns lawfully. That is a signal that it's time to modernize our outdated laws. They are law-abiding until they are not. The laws, in fact, actually, let me correct the record, the laws have changed, but they've only changed 
in the direction of allowing more and more guns on the street and loosening protections for communities like mine. I have honestly attempted to understand why Republicans honor their assault weapons more than they honor life, more than they honor children, more than they honor first responders, more than they honor vulnerable, innocent members of communities across this country. I do not understand and I cannot understand. The American people are demanding action on, of us. Gun owners, Republicans, I've heard from them, and they want meaningful action on guns. To my fellow Americans, please know Democrats have heard your cries, your pain, your outrage, and your demands, and today this committee will act. To my beloved community of El Paso, especially the August 3rd survivors and their families, this vote today is for you. I love you and I will always stand up for you. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. General Lady yields back for purposes of Mr. Owen's seek recognition. I'd like to strike the last word. Gentleman is recognized. I yield my, my time to uh, Mr. Bishop. I thank the gentleman from Utah. And um, I, I guess I want first to uh, ask whether Mr. Owens would yield to Mr. Cicilline to answer the distinction that I have drawn, because I believe it fairly comes from the language of the several cases, the three cases, Heller, McDonald, and New York State uh, Rifle and Pistol Association, the distinction that I've made, uh, because the chairman has been very clear that the purpose of the majority in this bill is to ban weapons in common use in the United States. And so I want to make sure, give Mr. Cicilline an opportunity to, to say if I've misrepresented the case, because I will say, I believe to the extent he suggests that weapons in common use at the time are also weapons that are unusual and dangerous, that's false. That's a misreading, a purposeful misreading of the opinions. So I'd, get, I'd like to offer Mr., uh, Mr. Owen, if you would offer to yield to Mr. Cicilline, if he cares to correct what I've said about the cases. Yes, I will. Be yeah, able. I would uh, welcome the opportunity to correct your uh, misunderstanding of the law. The, district, the United States Supreme Court in the District of Columbia versus Heller said emphatically, like most rights, the right secured by the Second Amendment is not unlimited. From Blackstone through the 19th century, commentators and courts routinely explain that the right was not a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever in any manner whatsoever and for whatever purpose whatsoever. We think the limitation is fairly supported by the historical tradition of prohibiting the carrying of dangerous and unusual weapons. They go on to say in the same opinion that weapons that are most useful in military service, M16 rifles and the like, may be banned without infringement upon the Second Amendment right. That's Heller. And if there's any question what the Supreme Court meant, four circuit courts that interpreted Heller, the first one, Warman versus Healy, the First Circuit, said in ruling that a Massachusetts state statute which modeled the 1994 federal assault weapons bans, they said, we previously established that the core of the Second Amendment right is limited to self-defense in the home on the part of a responsible law-abiding individuals, and then found that the, that, that did not justify the possession of an assault weapon, and it upheld the ban on assault weapons. In Colby versus Hogan, the Fourth Circuit, the Fourth Circuit upheld the Maryland Firearm Safety Act, which again banned AR-15s and other military-style weapons, and they say, quoting Heller, continuing on, the Heller court specified that weapons that are most useful in military service, M16 rifles and the like, may be banned without infringement on the Second Amendment. All right, thank you. In the, you, in the you, second, like sir, time. I know would you don't want to hear me? all of it. Of okay. course you would don't. You, you really want an explanation. Like no, I think you've heard enough I, I because you're have, wrong. I want to you're wrong. Uh, what I want to do I, I can claim my own time, so. It's a, it's Mr. Owen's time. I'm only half done. I don't, want you, to, I don't want you to burn all the time, Mr. Cicilline. Here's what I'd point out about what you just said. You said that the Supreme Court said that weapons like the M16 can be banned. M16 the, and the like. That's right. The M16 and the like are not in common use. They are not in common use. Machine guns are not in common use in the United would States. The they may yield? be banned. Would the gentleman yield? The no, test that no, the, no, that the Supreme the Court has applied no, no, is not. whether they are in common use. And with that, I yield back to Mr. Owens. Would the gentleman yield for a second? Wishes to yield to the chairman. Okay. Uh, I'd, I'd, yield to the chair. point, I'd simply point out... The AR-15 is the civilian version of the uh, M-16. To identical. Back to the, uh, Mr. I wonder whether the chairman knows, I think the chairman does know, that there are more than 20 million AR-15s in the United States. That's in common use. 
And in fact, the chairman, of course, knows that because the chairman readily conceded. In fact, the chairman said it is the purpose of the majority's bill to ban weapons that are in common use in the United States. That flies in the face. That is an absolute confrontation with the United States Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has declared that is what the the Second Amendment protects for the purpose of self-defense, is the use of weapons in common use in the United States. The other question that I have, and I hope to get into this at some further length, is Democrats engage in such unbelievable accusation about Republicans in connection with this issue, but the question is, why are you content to pass measures that do not work? If you are horrified by the circumstances that you describe, why are you prepared to pass a bill which will affect at most 250 or so of the killings a year that are of which 100,000 or more by guns? Why is that? It is because you are trying to proceed incrementally to something that else beyond this bill, and you ought to be honest enough to admit it. The gentleman, the gentleman's time is I, I, yield, I yield back. The gentleman yields back for what purposes the gentleman from Texas seek recognition. Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. Gentleman is recognized. Mr. Chairman, for the record, I think I'm probably the only native 